Oh. Good evening, everyone. Let me put this on. get this all on. Good evening everyone. I'm assuming you can hear me. Um, let me just make sure. Yeah, my mic is on. Fantastic. Right. Let's try that again. There we go. Right. Good evening everyone. Uh, hopefully you're all okay. Um, I've got to keep my volume down because obviously Ezra is asleep, or mentally sleeping, and the interruption wave then for that. Um, if you are all ready, send me a thumbs up or some kind of emoji to tell me that you're ready and we'll begin. Um, while I'm waiting for those to come through, we can have a look at last week's winners. So winners so far, Pete and Cole, Liam Liam, Paul and Sarah, Paul and Sarah, Andrew Stewart and Matthew, Paul and Sarah, Paul and Sarah. So Paul and Sarah won four times so far. So four times. Current champions are Paul and Sarah. We need a new champion, I think. Um, I'm not sure, not sure who you're joining. Um, by the way, if it goes dark, it's because we've got to turn the light on the hunt. We don't want to turn it on at the moment. No, it's fine. Make them see. Oh, oh. Cool. So, thumbs up from Luke. Thumbs up from Mike. Paul, Nan, can you give me a thumbs up or some kind of emoji on WhatsApp to tell me that you're ready? And then we'll begin. I'm trying to remember what rounds are, this week. <laughs> okay, Paul, Sarah, are you ready? Okay, right. We've got three people that are ready. Fantastic. We're waiting for Paul and Sarah to find out if they're ready. And then we'll begin. So let's move on to the rules. So then, uh, all questions will appear on the screen. Write all your answers down on the piece of paper and mark it in your quiz. Unless stated, it is one point per correct question. Our answers will appear at the end of the quiz, and you have 20 seconds per question. Okay, so your first round of seeding is, as usual, entertainment. Let's begin. So, question number one. What is the capital of Westeros in Game of Thrones? So, in the TV series Game of Thrones, what is the capital of Westeros? Okay. 
So what is the capital of Westeros in Game of Thrones? Question number two. What is the name of the prison in the popular BBC sitcom Porridge starring Ronnie Barker? So what is the name of the prison in the popular BBC sitcom Porridge starring Ronnie Barker? Don't forget at the end of each round we're going to send our pictures in of our um, answers. Question number two, what is the name of the prison in the popular BBC sitcom Porridge starring Ronnie Barker? Question number three, which well-known Welsh village was the primary set in the 1960s TV show The Prisoner? So which well-known Welsh village was the primary set in the 1960s TV show The Prisoner? I think uh, it are 50 points up for grabs tonight. I'm saying a full 50 tonight. <coughs> Question number four. Which TV theme begins in the words, you know we belong together? Which TV theme begins with the words, you know we belong together? Let me try one out. You yeah, hate it when you get Question number five. Which critically acclaimed US TV drama was set around the fictional Stern Cooper advertising agency in New York? So question number five. Which critically acclaimed US TV drama was set around the fictional Stern and Cooper advertising agency in New York? Question number six. In which fictional town was the sitcom Dad's Army set? So in which fictional town was the sitcom Dad, Dad's Army set? Question number seven. Which comedian and actor plays Alan Partridge? All you can see is your eyes doing this out the corner of my eyes. Aren't you? You've got any? So, number seven, which comedian and actor plays Alan Partridge? Question number eight. In which city do Ross and Rachel get married in Friends? It, it, I wish you could see what I'm seeing right now. All I can see is steps from with a pen and paper down. It's so funny. So, number eight, in which city do Ross and Rachel get married in France? Hmm? Oh, 
just how much you know about friends. Question number one. Which UK show is the world's longest news and current affairs TV programme? Which UK show is the world's longest news and current affairs TV programme? And your final question for tonight, uh, sorry, for this round, is who presents Dragon's Den? Who presents it? Fair enough. Steph's a bit upset at the moment. Okay, so that is the end of your first round. Take, so make sure you've got answers to all of the questions. We've got an answer for some of the questions that you can. Um, take a picture of your answers and send it through to me. Okay, and then we will move on. So your picture round is the same type of round that we had last week. Okay, Paul, if you're on the thing now, um, yeah, Paul, to be honest, if you're behind, you can always use Nan's answers, she just sent it to everyone, so Mike's, Paul, just use Mike and Nan's answers, you're fine. It's okay, uh, Paul, Man and Mike have just sent their answers through, so just borrow some of, them, some of theirs if you want. <laughs> Don't forget, when you send your answers through, send it to a private message, because, um, yeah, everyone can see those answers now. <laughs> oh, dear, that's brilliant. Luke, if there's any that you've missed, you can always fill in the gaps. Right, okay. Um, round... So, uh, round two then. Um, and Paul, I can tell you, some of the answers that I've seen from Man and Mike are correct. Uh, <laughs> um, so, round two then. Uh, same as last week, you can see... Um, a picture made up of different words or different letters. And all you have to do is guess the phrase. So I'll give you an example again. Um, in this round you'll see a phrase that is represented by words and or pictures. You just need to tell me what the answer is. So it's the same kind of round that we did last week. So I'll give you an example. Um, in this example, you will see 
um, that the picture shows the word ground and London. Now the word London is underneath, which means that the answer is London underground. So you can see how it's going to work. Okay. Um, just so I know you're all understanding that, if you can just send me a quick OK or a thumbs up or any emoji you like, that is absolutely fine. And then we'll begin. So any kind of emoji you want, just so I know that you understand how this round works, and we'll go. Brilliant. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Steph. Paul, Nan, yeah, uh, sorry, Nan even. Thank you. Paul and Luke, if you're happy with the round, fantastic. We can do it. It's very, it's, it's exactly the same kind of round as last week. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, what phrase is this? So remember, all you need to do is tell me what the phrase is. What is this phrase? Uh, what is this image? What phrase is represented to in this image? And don't forget, because of this round, I'm going to give you a little bit longer, so you haven't got 20 seconds, you've got about 30, uh, 40 seconds, I'm going to give you this round. Okay, so what is this phrase? I'll give you a clue, Ken. So don't forget to count. Giving you a big clue there, count. Okay. Move on, question number two. What phrase is this? Okay, now I'll give you another clue. See how many words you can see in this. Without rearranging the letters oh, too much. Have a look at how many different words are in there. That's why my phrase that I see. So, what is this phrase? Remember, look at how many words are there. Okay, question number three. What phrase is this one? Pretty easy one, this one. Yeah, see. Thought it would go easy on you. Don't make it too hard for you. Hey? Maybe. Okay. So what phrase is this? Pretty easy one, this one, I think. Question number four. What phrase is this? Oh, 
for peace and earth and help for me. Jesus. Um, no, it's not right, really. Um, I thought these ones were much easier than this one. Okay. Steph's so definitely giving up. Okay, we're going on to question number five. Uh, what friends is this one? This one's a little bit of a difficult one. Again, what I would say is have find two words that are within this one. And then hopefully you'll find your answer. Raccoonage. So find two words and then use the symbol at the beginning. Where's the second thing? <laughs> Unless you're going to be pronounced like Google. Okay, going on to question number six in ten. Question number six. What phrase is this one? Again, another pretty easy one, I think. Look at position somewhere. <laughs> I think a little bit more outside the box and just read it, but have a look at the position of a letter. Put it down what you think. Okay, and five, four, one, question number seven. What phrase is this? What phrase is this one? So remember, the reason this round is taking a while is because I have to do a little bit longer. Question number eight. What phrase is this? Question number nine. What phrase is this one? Please don't hate me for this one. We've really got to look at the position of some of So look at the position of the letters. In fact, how. Right, fine, what you just said in yourself. So 
some right there on exactly what you're seeing there. What's the first one on the left? Write that down. Okay. <laughs> Question number 10. What phrase is this? What's one point sent for? Okay, what phrase is this? Especially is it over there? How many do you get? And five, four, three, two, one. There we go, that is the end of the picture round, so send through your answers, this will be interesting to see, send through your answers, let me know what you think they were, let me know what you thought of that round as well, did you enjoy it? It was ball sack according to Steph. Luke reckons you've done pretty well on that. So remember, send the pictures to me in a private message, not in the lockdown quiz one. Okay, so we've got food and drink next. Oh, well done, Luke, on number nine. Oh. Well done, Luke, on that round, I must say. Oh, Paul, Paul's answer for number nine. No. Oh, well done, Mike. I can tell you both now, Mike and Paul, uh, sorry, Mike and Luke, you've got number nine spot on. Well done with that. And let's have a look at the uh, man's one. Okay, right, we're going to move on to now, food and drink. Okay, so, question number one. Who is replacing Sandy Togsvig as host of the Great British Bake Off for the 2020 series? No, I think back in here. Who is replacing Sandy Togswig as host of Great British Bake Off for the 2020 series? What's one asking? Question number two. Grenadine is odd obtained from which fruit? So grenadine is obtained from which fruit? Grenadine is obtained from which fruit? Question number three. Gluten is found in which cereal grain? Gluten is found in which cereal grain? The mic is on. Do 
Question number four. Which fast food franchise has the largest number of restaurants in the world? Get why I was doing that answer. Which fast food franchise has the largest number of restaurants in the world? Question number five. What French city does Roubaix originate from? Waiting for Paul's remark on how I pronounce that. Boulebaise, I think is correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Am I right, Boulebaise? Boulebaise. 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 <laughs> Okay, what French city does Boulebaise originate from? Question number six. What type of wheat is used to make pasta? So what type of wheat is used to make pasta? I've got Paul's seal of approval for the... Uh, pronunciation of that. Everything is still good. Uh, what type of wheat is used to make pasta is question number six. Question number seven. What is the British name for a zucchini? What is the British name for a zucchini? Okay. Question number eight. In which country will you find wine will you find wine growing region the Yara Valley? So in which country will you find wine growing region the Yara Valley? I didn't say Paul was wrong with that answer either. But I had Mike and I had Mike and Luke send in their answers first. That's why I commented on that. Question number nine. Deer meat is known by what name? Deer meat. Oh, I thought you said deer meat, as in deer meat. <laughs> How's that for <laughs> Deer meat is known by which name? Or what name? And question number ten. Bacardi is what type of spirit? What kind of Okay, Bacardi is what type of spirit? And that is your question from food and drink. Um, send in your answers and we'll move on to the sports round. Mm -hmm. Say again. Or even on the YouTube. 
Give me a minute. I want to see what I look like on the actual. <laughs> right. Luke has sent through his. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, Steph. Oh, thank you, Mikey. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Right, we are moving on to round four sports. Okay. Here we go. Question number one. Who is the current captain of the England women's football team? <laughs> All I can hear is Seth cursing or moaning behind or right on no, mad. As soon as any question comes up, oh, I've sobbed this. Bloody hell. Thank you, Nan. Very nice picture of Papa's socks. You will enjoy that in the lockdown quiz at WhatsApp group. Uh, maybe that could be a new thing. Let's all see what socks you're wearing. <laughs> Steph's going to get a picture of my socks. Uh, question number one Who is the current captain of the England women's football team? Question number two Which cricket club plays at the Oval? Blonde girl. Didn't even see. Okay. Which cricket club plays at the Oval? Luke's got Sonic the Hedgehog sucks. Question number three. Modern pentha pentha Petathlon involves running, shooting, and horse riding. Which other two sports are featured? Modern pentathlon involves running, shooting, and horse riding. Which other two sports are featured? What are you doing? Don't move. Not even answering these ones. Not oh, okay. <laughs> you really think? Question number four. Usain Bolt is still the fastest man in the world, running a hundred meters in nine point uh, nine point five uh, nine nine point fifty eight seconds. In which year did he set that record? Why have you sent a picture of you? Hmm. Usain Bolt is still the fastest man in the world, running 100 metres in 9.58 seconds. In which year did he set that record? Number four. Round four. Okay, question number five. Jessica Ennis Hill competed for Great Britain in which sport? <laughs> Jessica Ennis Hill competed for Great Britain in which sport? Question number six. Which country's rugby team is called the Springboks? Or the Springboks, even. So, which country's rugby team is called the Springboks? Okay. 
That's question number six. Question number seven. Who is the Premier League's all-time top scorer? So this is the um, English Football Premier League. Who is the Premier League's all-time top scorer? Question number eight. In which outdoor sport would you need a stick, a puck, and a mouth guard? In which outdoor sport would you need a stick, a puck, and a mouth guard? Question number nine. The Fosbury flop is a technique used in which sport? The Fosbury flop is a technique used in which sport? And your final question of this round. Who won more caps for England, Wayne Rooney or David Beckham? So who won more caps for England, Wayne Rooney or David Beckham? That is your final question of the sports round, so get your answers on uh, your paper. Send through a picture of your paper and we will move on to tonight's final round, which is again general knowledge. And hopefully we'll have a tiebreaker tonight, because I've got a good one. So general knowledge is your final round for this evening. Cheers, that. And have we got one from Nan? Has Nan sent hers through? Nearly got them all. Okay, fantastic. Right, and your final uh, round for the seeding general knowledge. Question number one then. How many children does Queen Elizabeth have? So that's our current, uh, I think it's, yeah, so I can't remember if it's a current Queen Elizabeth, it's a current Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, Queen Elizabeth I, can't remember now. I'm sure I meant for a second or first or later. But the current Queen, how many children does she have? She should put it first, Elizabeth II, is she? I can't remember. But yeah, so Queen Elizabeth, how many children does she have? If it's the second, then she's not going to be the first. Okay, how many children does Queen Elizabeth have? Question number two. Which city hosted the Olympics in the year 2000? So which city hosted the Olympics in the year 2000? I do feel a bit like a Stephen Fry sat here and I've been a quiz master. All this knowledge. 
I'd sit without the earpiece. Maybe it's not that much. What? That you didn't know which creditors it was? Or did I? Which city hosted the Olympics in the year 2000? Question number three. Which is longer, a mile or a kilometre? Which is longer, a mile or a kilometre? Question number four. How far off the ground is a regulation MBA basketball hoop? So how far off the ground? How far off the How far off the ground is a regulation NBA basketball hoop? Question number. Uh, Paul, if you can do it in feet, that would be perfect for number four. Uh, yeah, so number four, if you put it in feet, if you do it in meters, that's fine, we'll have to convert it. That's not a problem. Um, if you've already done it in meters, that's fine. If you want to put it in feet, that's fine. What? Question number five. Matt Goss, Luke Goss, and Craig Logan made up which band? So Matt Goss, Luke Goss, and Craig Logan made up which band? As in, what band did they form? They didn't make a band up as such. And... Yeah. So, made up these three made which band? Question number six. What's the currency of Vietnam? I think Steph's truly given up tonight. What is the currency of Vietnam? Dime bars. Brilliant. Question number seven then. What in the animal kingdom is a doe? A what? A doe. What's the currency? What's the thing? What's the dough? There's a microphone on here. You're shouting it bloody louder than that. They're going to hear you. What's the dough? Jesus. Question number eight. What number is a bacon baker's dozen? In? Not a bacon's dozen. A baker's dozen. So what number is a baker's dozen? I'll repeat your question again. What number is a baker's dozen? Question number nine. Who are Harry Potter's two best friends? You can't remember their names, can you? Okay. Surnames? Who are Harry Potter's two best friends? We're the two best friends that anyone can have. We're the two best friends that anyone can have. And question number 10. What was the first single to be released by the band Oasis? Question number 10. 
and that is your the end of the general knowledge round so once you have put your answers in we can then work out the scores so send your answers through and we'll go on to the scores Thank you, Nan. Thank you, Papa. Thank you. And actually, we've got Luke. Thank you, Luke. Just waiting on Mike and Paul, and then we'll go through the answers. Paul's has come through. Thank you, Paul. Right, fantastic. Okay, we are ready for some answers. So, the answers from question uh, round one entertainment is King's Landing is the capital of Westeros. Uh, HMP Slade is the prison. Uh, number three, the um, town in Wales is Port Merion. I think that's right. Uh, as in the pronunciation. Uh, Home and Away was the song. Remember it? No. <laughs> Mad Men was the answer to number five. Warmington on Sea was the answer to number six. Steve Coogan is who played Alan Partridge. Number eight is Las Vegas. They got married in Las yeah. Vegas. Yes, I can't fit in that. At the end of season five. They got married. Panorama is the answer to number nine, and ten is Evan Davis. So mark yourself out that one ready. And then we'll move on to round two. Now, round two, I'll go through with you now. So, what was this phrase? It was the seven seas. Of course it was. If you count all the letter C's, that's what you get. The seven C's. Question number two. What was that one? It was mother-in-law. Do you want to come and have a look? <laughs> I'll show you how it was mother-in-law because there's the word mum and it's in between the word police. Oh, fuck. <laughs> There we go, mother-in-law. That's not, police aren't necessarily the law. Do they not? <laughs> you police it, they're not the law. What is the phrase? It is mother-in-law, mum-law. What phrase is this? It was always look on the bright side of life. Do -do. Do -do, do -do, do -do. Yeah, that one I've, I imagine most people got right. Uh, number four was wet behind the ears. Word. Why the fuck is it? It's the same. It's... What, what does it mean? What does it mean? Hmm. Tell me. What does wet behind the ears mean? Oh, I don't mind it. So, number four, wet behind the ears. Number five. Do you want to have a look at what this one was? Can't really look at them. Number five was don't look back in anger. And how is it? Don't look back. There's the don't sign. Oh, wow. Look is backwards, and it's in between rage. Oh. There you go. 
Question number six. What phrase is this? Steph, you were so close. It was a rise in temperature. <laughs> I'm sleeping on the sofa tonight. Number seven was undercover cop. So you were right with that one. Undercover cop. Number eight was a bad spell of weather. It was a bad spell oh, of weather. Well. I'll say what you see. <laughs> Number nine was ping pong. P in G and P on G. No, come on, look. No, no, but what did you tell me? I well, said, write, write down, down P in G. That's what you put. No, but I you said, said in a G. No, you said P in G at first. Oh, whatever. And look, if you. So P in G and P on G. Ping pong. Well done. So that's Mike and Luke got that one correct straight away. Well done. And number 10. What phrase is this? It is within reason. Within reason. Not Reese with a spoon. Not Reese with a spoon, no. Okay, moving on to round three, food and drink. Uh, yep, yeah. round three, Matt Lucas. Why did you say Lucas? Because it was racist. I think it's a bond. Now you realise why I said uh, yep, yeah, pomegranate was number two, number three was wheat, number four is subway. Marcel is the, is it Marcel or Marseille for the French city? Now at Durham. Number seven was courgette, number eight was Australia. Number nine is venison, and number ten is white rum. But I will give you rum. Okay, so mark your scores out of ten that one as well. And we will move on to round four. Sports. Uh, Steph Houghton is number one. Number two was Surrey County Cricket Club. Number three was fencing and swimming. Now, uh, 2009 is the answer to number four. Hectathlon is the answer to number five. Number six was South Africa. Seven is Alan Shearer. Eight is hockey, well done. Number nine was high jump. And number 10, Wayne Rooney. He won 120 becks, 115. In sports, yeah. 2009 and heptathlon. Oh, so wrong. Oh. There we go. And question number five. Uh, no, the answer number one is four. She has four children: Charles, Andrew, Anne, and Edward. Number two was Sydney. <coughs> number three, a mile is longer. Number four. It is 10 feet off the ground, basketball hoop. Number five was Bross. Number six, the Vietna Viet Vietnam currency is a Vietnamese dong. <laughs> a female deer is a doe. A doe, a deer, a female deer. Number eight is not 12, it is 13. Number nine was Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger. <laughs> and number ten was Super Sonic. So, total up your scores. Let me know how we got on. If you need a tiebreaker, I have one ready for this evening. So send your scores through on the Lockdown Quiz group so we can see. So if you don't have to, with yours, if you don't want to. Luke got 24 out of 50 this evening. 
Steph got 15. Well done, Steph. Paul got 29. Mike got 31. Nan and Papa? Okay, fantastic. We've got an outright winner tonight and first time on the leaderboard it is Mike. Well done, Mike. Fantastic result over there. So 31 for Mike. Paul is in second place with 29. Luke is in third place with 24. Nan and Papa are in fourth place with 20 and Steph is in fifth place with 15. Well done to all uh, involved. Mike, sorry, Mike and Kelly. Sorry, yes, I should say Mike and Kelly, not just Mike. Um, Paul and Sarah are in 20 with 29. So fantastic work, everyone. Sarah's getting blamed for it tonight. Well done to everyone. <laughs> We've got a domestic going on here now. Brilliant, well done all. Right, for an extra point, who's going to get closest to the tiebreaker then? Let's give someone an extra point tonight, seeing as we've already got a winner established. So, see how to the, yeah, see if you can, whoever's closest will get a point. So, how many people survived the sinking of RMS Titanic. See if anyone is able to get a correct answer. Closest will get an extra point tonight. Hmm? Seven three five two six seven plus five hundred. Okay, 400 from Mike and Kelly. Nan and Papa, are you going to have a go? So for an extra point, who is going to be closest? Okay, Steph, are you having a go? No? Okay, so the extra point then will go to... Nan and Papa, 706 pass, uh, people survived in the end. So well done, Nan and Papa. You get yourself an extra point, which puts you on to uh, 21 points. Well done, Nan and Papa. 21 points in the end. Um, fantastic. Good work. Um, you can, but you'll have to find out the answer to that one, Paul, because I haven't got the answer to that one, I'm afraid. Um, the only answer I can give you is um, that 706 survived and the rest died. So whatever the rest are, that's how many died. Right, well done um, to tonight's winners, Mike and Kelly, anyway. And... Um, would people prefer, do you all still want to do this weekly as well? That's the other question. Do you all want to do this weekly or 
would you prefer to do it every two weeks? Um, I'm happy to do it weekly still if we get any people if we ever if everyone wants to do it. Um, but if you'd rather me do it every two weeks, that's fine as well. Just let me know what works best for you guys. Maybe what we could do is. Yeah, well, it's up to you. Just let me know what works best for everyone. Every two weeks or every week. Okay, well, while I'm talking to you all on the WhatsApp, I will end the stream there. See you all next time.